so hard. Here we go. Yeah, right through. a decent fish right there. Yeah, I'll tell you what I did differently today than what I did yesterday. Yesterday was a really tough day for me. Marked a lot of fish but hardly caught any at all. Yesterday I got denied over and over and over. And uh, so what I decided to do today was come out and kind of simplify things a little bit. Crushed them on big plastics, five, six inch plastics with bait on her. Today what I did is I basically came out and we went out real deep and now I'm working my way back in. I'm in about 101 feet of water right here. And uh, what I did is I'm just using cut bait with a 3 8 ounce jig on it so I can hit the bottom, pound that bottom hard and uh, no plastic at all. Just kind of made the bait. I'm kind of thinking to myself, you know, if these fish really are not that aggressive. And uh, yesterday I went through just an unbelievable amount of baits from jigging wraps to spoons every type you can think of good fish right there i'm gonna keep this one right here good little table fare and uh, get jigging again jigs to spoons almost everything I have tied up has got a super braid on it um, which is important when you're jigging in this deep water for two reasons you get a great hook set for, or actually for three reasons you get a great hook set the other thing is too is you need to be able to set that hook decently and that's the main thing right there that you get a great hook set the other part is really if you think about it when you're fishing anything over about 30 feet of water when you start working these baits you're not really getting the right action you need out of the baits um, with mono because there's so much stretch in the line so it's very important and the other part is sensitivity so you can feel when these fish bite if they're chasing it heavy i'll basically just keep reeling and reeling real slow stop it for a split there's a fish right there stop it for a split second and give that fish a chance to hit that bait now that fish definitely i was just bouncing the bottom and all i've got on here is just a 3 8 ounce jig with a piece of walleye on here Get him out of the hole. Decent fish right there. Basically, I'm using a stand-up jig and just a piece of cut meat on here. And today I'm using some walleye. Caught off. It's the only walleye I caught out here this year. Saved it. And I'll kind of vary that meat too. A lot of times I'll use Cisco. I use walleye, I use crappie, and it really does make a difference some days on the bait for sure. You know, lake trout I feel are definitely a fish that comes up a lot and uh, smells the bait besides just looking at it too. This rod right here I'm using is a 42 inch mags rod and it's basically designed for lake trout or big pike or big walleyes. I always bring the scissors out so you can get the right cut on the bait which is important. So what I'm gonna do is basically, I've got the meat on here, I just filleted that walleye, 
and uh, left the skin on there, which is again another big thing you want to do. Otherwise, if you just have this, this the meat itself, what's going to happen? It's going to ripple up because a lot of times you're jigging really aggressively. So what I like to do is I kind of like cutting it in a V pattern like this. So I'll cut it like that, and typically, you know, I'll cut a two and a half to four inch piece. So I've got that cut into a a little bit of V right there and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut the other end so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cut about halfway up the piece right there make a slice in there like that and the way I'm gonna hook that I'm only gonna hook it once and I'm gonna hook it through the V part the narrow part of the V and basically that's how I'm hooking it just like that so what I'm using on these rods out here, all my inland rods, basically what I use is a 10 pound test, super braid, you know, to me, Power Pro, Fireline, um, it's all pretty decent. And then what I use, again, uh, I use a 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader on there. And I like to go a little bit longer. This water is super clear. These fish, I don't know how, but they can see a long ways. It's amazing when you're dropping a bait down how these fish will come up from the bottom screaming up 20, 30 feet seeing that bait drop down. So I've got about a 16 foot leader on here. Um, I don't like to go straight mono again like I was saying before because you don't have the sensitivity. You don't have any type of action you're not getting out of the bait. So it's real important to make sure that you have the super braid and the long leader. Hey everybody, let's kind of go over some of the rigs that I love to use for lake trout. Uh, again, you know, most of my rods are, you know, I've got a couple longer rods, especially when I'm up on Lake Superior, that are just over that 40 inch range. Um, I definitely like a heavy stiff rod, so you got lots of room to set the hook. And uh, you, know, you need that power, especially on them big lake trout. It's a little bit different when you're dealing with lake trout, like out here uh, on inland waters. You don't have the currents, uh, so I typically use more of a 10 pound test uh, super braid and an eight pound to 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader, anywhere from eight to, to 14, 15 feet. So basically what we got set up here, I've got one with a hair jig on there, three eighths ounce. I've got a jig and wrap with a little bit of meat on there, another jig and wrap with some meat on there. And uh, this has been the go-to uh, definitely jig the last uh, three days. It's a stand-up jig. Um, the last couple days uh, we were using plastics on there like paddle tails or split tails were working good too uh, with the meat. But boy, I'll tell you, definitely today it was just the plain jig and the walleye on there. That was definitely the key. See how I have it cut too. It really makes a difference when you watch that in the water. It gives it a little bit different action. And the other part is uh, spoons are very, very important. I like the spoons because you can really rip them hard. And some days that's what triggers these fish too. So here's uh, some of my favorite beats for out here too. Definitely the paddle tails. Um, not today and or yesterday, but the day before and the day before that, the paddle tails were like on fire. You know, that is the, the big thing about fishing any species. You definitely got to adjust. Every day is a little bit different. And uh, that, that really today, just using that chunk of walleye with a plain jig was everything. I tried for about an hour and a half, got denied, denied by using jig and wraps, all the plastics. Uh, just again, you know, when you, that's the thing. When you see them fish down there and they're constantly coming up and they're looking at your baits, these jigs I'm showing you right here, uh, they actually have a collar on them. Uh, they're a great jig along with a stand-up jig too. Now this jig I like a lot better if I'm staying off the bottom where when you are on the bottom a stand-up jig is real important because it keeps that bait up like this all the time and when you're pounding and pounding that bottom you don't want that bait to be laying itself into the mud. You want it to be standing up at an angle like that and that makes a huge difference right here a little bit of scent uh, is huge too and really varying the colors of plastics that you use too is huge too is i'm really pounding that bottom you know i'm stirring up that bottom big time and today i've got one of my trout pounding the bottom and the other one i got about four feet off the bottom and basically got him to chase the bait. And again, I just, once they're, when they're on it like that and they come flying up like that, I just do a real slow 
reel where you're just moving that that bait up and you never really stop until they actually hit it so it's getting away from them they're grabbing it so they can get back down to the bottom and that's how i caught the second one definitely a great day to be alive off the ice heading into the office which you know what it would have been nice to kind of stay out there and fish a little bit more what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you guys how to clean these lake trout and we're going to fry them up. Hey everybody, we're back in the office here. What an awesome morning we had out on Big Green. You know, I love fishing that deep water. Again, you know, when you're used to guiding out of Winnebago and you're fishing 14 to 16 feet of water and you have the opportunity to reel a fish out of 100 feet of water, it is a lot of fun. So I'm going to clean these lake trout up real quick, show you guys how to do it. Got the deep fryer already plugged in, ready to roll. Got the potatoes cut. And you'll see, like, this lake, you know, is the fish out of here absolutely delicious eating. So basically, cutting them like you would any other fish. Going around that rib cage. Much better. Look how orange that meat is out of them fish here. There you go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chunk them up. I'm actually going to leave the, the skin on them. And uh, we're going to flour them up real quick with some breading. I've got the fish all chunked up here. I'm going to wipe my hands off here. And uh, deep fryer should be ready to rock and roll. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to throw the french fries in there first. Wipe my hands off one last time. Put the fries in. I love cutting up potatoes. And homemade french fries are the best. Alright, these will take about five minutes. Meanwhile, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bread up the fish. Okay, I got one batch of french fries ready, the other batch is almost done. What I'm going to do is I got the grease back up to about 340. I'm going to start dumping the lake trout in here. All right, first batch of lake trout are done. Running the grease between about 360 and 370 seems to be all perfect. A little bit of salt on her. A little hot. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> hey, everybody, thanks for joining us on our YouTube adventure this week. I'll tell you what, make sure you subscribe down below and Make sure you check out our podcast, We Eat, Fish, Eat, every Tuesday. Remember, like I always say, be damn proud to be an American because we still are living in the greatest country in the world as of today. And no doubt, it's a great day to be alive. See you next week.